Hey y'all and welcome back to the Pendry home or welcome if you are new here. My name is Lakin. Welcome to my channel and today we are jumping right into lots of homemaking in the mundane life. So we've all heard this word and we've all experienced this word daily in our daily homemaking, in our daily life, in everything that we do word is mundane. So what exactly is that? And how can we beautify the mundane life? How, how can we find beauty in the mundane? And so today I'm going to share with y'all what the Bible says about finding beauty in the mundane life and how we can use these daily little tasks um, every single day to glorify the Lord. So I'm going to start here in John chapter number 13 and verse number one. And this is before Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. And it says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So I'm going to repeat that part right there. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And now you're probably wondering, what in the world does Jesus washing the feet of his disciples have anything to do with homemaking and finding beauty in the mundane? So, you know, in the mundane life, you know, if you're feeling frustration with your daily life task and repetitive, like every day you got to fold laundry, every day you got to wash dishes, every day, um, you know, you got to cook supper, you have to uh, make the bed, you know, all these daily things. Are you feeling frustrated with that? Are like, how is that glorifying to the Lord if you are just doing this stuff repetitively? And why doesn't every day or why can't every day feel amazing and exciting? So back to that point of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, and it's saying that he loved them unto the end. So Jesus loved his disciples unto the end of their unfaithfulness, their weariness, in their doubts, and in their fears. And so when they were bored of their work, like what they were called to do, he still loved them regardless. He loved them to the end. So as homemakers, when we become frustrated, when we get filled with weariness, when we have doubts and fears about what we're doing and about the future and these daily things that we're doing, you know, we get, like I said, we get frustrated with what we're doing every single day. Jesus still loves us. He loves us to the end. So you can find comfort in knowing that God is pleased by your daily mundane life if it's the calling he has for you. So we need to have this mindset shift that, you know, if Jesus has called you to be in your home and to be the keeper of your home, then you are doing everything that is glorifying unto the Lord by making the bed, by cooking breakfast, cooking lunch, cooking supper, sweeping the floor, doing the laundry, doing the dishes, taking care of the children, taking care of your husband. These things that are just daily life tasks that have to be done every single day are glorifying unto the Lord. So we need to have that mindset shift. Now I am going to put this in there. I believe that biblically, you know, God had it planned for women to be the keepers of the home. And we will dive further into that as the year passes by, like how that truly would be the plan of the Lord. But we also have to keep in mind that some women do not stay at home and how thankful we are that they don't. Because let's think about doctors, women doctors. Let's think about women nurses. We are so thankful that they do go to a job every single day because we need them. So, or what about the school teachers, the women that are school teachers, you know, for the ones of us that don't feel confident enough in homeschooling our children and, and, or just want to send our children to public school. How thankful we are that the Lord has allowed these women to be school teachers. Um, so 
while I am all for being a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home wife, let's also not look down upon the women that don't because their calling might be out in the work field. And we have to do what the Lord calls us to do. So just because the Lord called me to stay at home and take care of my husband and my children does not mean that he called another woman down the road to do the same. He may have called her for other greater purposes in her life to be a school teacher, to be a doctor, to be a nurse. And those are just some examples right there. But I just wanted to throw that in there. Just because it's a calling for someone does not mean it's a calling for you too. You have got to do what the Lord calls you to do to fulfill your purpose and to fully feel content with your life. You have got to surrender to that calling no matter what it is. So let's jump back into that, <laughs> into the the topic of today, which is the beauty in the mundane. I just wanted to throw that in there. So finding comfort in knowing that God is pleased by your daily mundane life, if it is the calling he has for you. And the mindset shift that we can have here is when we do the laundry. Laundry is one of those things that I, honestly, laundry and dishes. And I had to choose to really change my mindset about laundry and dishes because laundry, I got to thinking about it one day. I was just like, man, I always have to do laundry and I always got to wash dishes. And I was like, but why do I feel so frustrated because I have to fold laundry every single day and because I have to wash dishes? I was like, I'm just standing there at my wash machine and I'm like, why do I feel frustrated when this washing machine literally is doing all the work for me? All I have to do is put this laundry in this washing machine, put some soap in there and press a button and it does all of the work for me. And then when it gets done, all I have to do is take it out and put it in a dryer, which then again, all I do is press a button and it does all of the work for me. So then all that's left for me to do is to fold it or hang it and put it away. Like, how hard is that? Why am I so frustrated with this task when literally the machines are doing all of the work for me? So I had this mindset shift and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, it was like a light bulb just went off. I was like, I have machines that do this heavy and hard labor for me that I don't have to. And I'm just thankful that I have clothes to wear, that my family has clothes to wear because others in the world they may not. And I have these hands to fold this laundry. The Lord has given me the physical health to stand here or sit here and fold this laundry and put it away. And putting it away means that I have furniture and a home to store these, these items in. You know, once again, other people may not have a home to put their, their clothes in or have furniture to store their clothes in. And some people may even have to wash their clothes by hand still in other countries. And so I just had this like, wow moment of why am I getting so frustrated with this when God has truly blessed me in this area of my life? I should not feel this way. So that's when I, I dived into this study and I was like, I, I got to share this with y'all. Number two is the dishes. So again, I don't have a dishwasher. Now, if I had a dishwasher, praise the Lord, the dishwasher would be the one doing all the work for me. All I would have to do is load that dishwasher with my dirty dishes and then fill it with soap, turn on a button, and then unload the dishwasher and put it away. Then the dishwasher would be doing all the work for me. So if you have a dishwasher, think of it that way. You are, you're not doing any of the heavy labor. Your machine is doing all of that work for you. All you're doing is simple, simple tasks that others might wish that they, they had. So I cannot wait until the day that I have a dishwasher. Since I've been married, we have not had a dishwasher. I have washed. Growing up, we always had a dishwasher. But since me and Houston have gotten married, I in our first home, we didn't have a dishwasher. In this house, we don't have a dishwasher. And I am so excited. I told Houston that when we start building our house, that is like the first thing going in my kitchen is the dishwasher. Like I am just so excited. Like that is going to be like the highlight of my, <laughs> my kitchen is having a dishwasher. But even though I don't have one, 
dirty dishes mean that my family is fed and nourished. So even though I'm having to wash these dishes by hands, again, the Lord has given me the physical ability and strength to wash these dishes. He has given me the physical ability and strength to cook the food that dirtied these dishes for me to be able to eat, for my husband to be able to eat, for my son to be able to eat, you know, or if I host people for other people to come into my home and to feel welcomed and loved and to eat yummy food, because who doesn't love having food when they go somewhere? (laughs) Um, So this just made me think, I'm just thankful to have food on my table because other people in other places, again, they might be scrambling around for food. They may not have food to eat. And I have these dirty dishes laying here. Yes, I have to wash them. Yes, I have to put in that labor to do so. But it holds so much meaning because I'm going to find the beauty in it. I'm going to find that the beauty in these dirty dishes is that I have the physical ability to wash them and my family has been fed. So another example is making the bed. So Making the bed for me is honestly like, yes, I want to make my bed. But, you know, there has been times where I didn't always want to make my bed. Or maybe you struggle with making your bed every single day. I love making my bed because even when your room isn't clean, it makes the space feel clean and more put together. And so I just feel like it's a good way to start your day and to start kind of your cleaning routine is to make your bed um, because it kind of just gets you into that moment and movement that you need to start everything else. And so finding the beauty in making your bed, making your bed, an unmade bed means that your family had somewhere to lay down for the night in a warm home and they got to rest comfortably. You know, when your bed is unmade, it holds so much beauty in it. You know, maybe it's you got to enjoy some time with your husband and or um, your children's beds being unmade. You had a safe, warm place for your children to lay down at night and to find peace and rest and comfort. And and same for you and your, and your spouse. It's the same exact thing. So we can find beauty in that we are thankful that we have a place to go to rest and to sleep and to be safe and warm at nighttime. Because again, other people may not have those same things. And though they may seem so simple to us, you know, I find that we take a lot of things for granted over here because, you know, we don't, we don't think about, we don't find or even try to find the beauty in it. But when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, the Lord is constantly going to remind you of these things. When you start feeling frustrated, if you are truly staying um, productive in your prayer life and, you know, serving the Lord, he's not going to let you get frustrated for too long without simply reminding you of all that you do have and all that you are to be grateful for. And I also wanted to point out this verse. It says in Isaiah chapter number 55, 11, verse 11, it says, and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And I like the part where it says, and satisfy thy soul in drought and be a spring of water whose waters fail not. So there is satisfaction in the mundane of life. There is beauty. We just have to change our mindset and shift everything and think of it spiritually, honestly, um, rather than not. And we need to turn our hearts towards the Lord Because he is glorified in our home during these daily things that we do every single day. And we just need to remember that, you know, these things that we do, we are glorifying God. And he's glorified by, you know, our hands working hard in the home. And let's not think negatively, you know, about what we're doing. Like, oh, I have to do this today. Oh, I have to do this. Or, um, you know... I have to fold the laundry. I have to uh, do the dishes and just be all burnt out. We need to change that them negative thoughts and think, I get to do this. I get to do this. I get to do this for my family. I get to do this in my home. And I get to do this and it's glorifying to the Lord. And we need to think about how he has graciously blessed us and that we get to do these things. 
and praise him while we're doing it. And I've, I've mentioned this before, you know, when I'm doing dishes, I don't know, there's just something about doing dishes that a lot of times I find myself talking to God while I'm doing dishes because I have a sink above my window. So I have this beautiful view when I'm doing dishes. And I thank the Lord that I have that beautiful view while I get to wash my dishes. Um, And I find myself always talking to the Lord when I'm doing dishes or when I'm cooking supper. And I think that's such a special moment. So like constantly trying to talk to the Lord, even in what we're doing, changing that mindset and saying, you know, that we get to do this and that we are glorifying the Lord and, and we are praising him you know, he wants us to bear fruit in our home. He doesn't want us to be negative. And if we are, then we're clearly not being, uh, glorifying. (laughs) And I just think these simple things, like it just, it just makes such a difference in your home and in your routines and what you're doing every single day. And in John chapter number 15 and verses eight and nine, it says, herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. So herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. Continue ye in my love. So do all things for the love of Christ. Do all things, you know, to glorify him and let's just not be negative let's bear fruit in our home let's make 2024 the year that we find joy and satisfaction in everything that we do in everything that the lord has allowed us to do in working with our hands and working willingly with our hands as it says in proverbs uh, chapter number 31 which we're going to be doing a whole study on that but You know, it does say in Proverbs chapter number 31 that the Proverbs, the virtuous woman, she works willingly with her hands. So let that sink in. Let's find beauty in the mundane. Let's find beauty in everything that we're doing every single day. And let's glorify the Lord in all of the mundane tasks.